Hi, welcome back to Watch It Played. My name is Rodney Smith, and in this video, we're going to learn Operation Tiny Evil for Mechs vs. Minions, which is designed and published by Riot Games. This is meant to be played after you complete Scenario 2, which we have a video for, and I'll link to that in the description of this video. Well, things were finally under control, and then one of those minions stole the Headmaster's mech, and it's now leading a new minion charge against us. Guess whose job it is to get the mech back? That's right, yours. <laughs> so let's get to the table and figure out how we're going to do this. This scenario is found in the Operation Tiny Evil dossier, and inside you'll not only find the new rules that we're going to learn, but also new cards that we'll add to the game in just a moment. First, lay out the map tiles as shown, with the minions placed as I have them here. Also put out the crystal compass oriented in this direction, and as usual, we have the command and damage decks along with the dice nearby. Just to conserve space, I've put both of the player's command lines over here, and then players can put their mechs on any one of these four spaces. Now it's time to go back to the box and find a couple of sealed components that we need to unlock. First, you'll need to unseal this box, and inside you'll find the pesky minion that stole the Headmaster's mech. We'll just put this aside for a moment. Then take out this deck of cards you'll also find inside the box and set it aside to be used later. Then, underneath of this final insert itself, you're going to find another board that's hidden here. Bring this out because it will be used as well. Place the boss in the center of the board, and his deck you can put nearby. He also has his own command line, which you'll find inside of this sleeve, and you should place that nearby as well. On the Doom Tracker, set the boss minion's health to 10. Or, if you want an easier game, you can set it to 5. Then, find the four rune coins and put them on top of the corresponding spaces here. Opening the packet included in this envelope will find new schematics, which you should give to the players based on their chosen yordles, returning the rest of the box. There's also two new damage cards, and you'll shuffle those into the damage deck. For this and every future scenario, each player can have at most two schematics in play. This means before going further, players should choose the two schematics that they want to keep, and then return the extras to the box. In all future games, players can always choose amongst all available schematics that they've unlocked, even ones that perhaps they didn't use in a previous game. And that's the setup. In Operation Tiny Evil, you need to reduce the boss minion's health to zero. And you have to get that done before he can get his GG101 Doom Cannon online and destroy everything. So let's go back to the table and learn the new rules in this scenario. For the minion phase, during minion movement, roll a rune die and then move all minions one space in that direction. So in this case, we've rolled blue, there's the blue crystal, so all the minions, unfortunately for Tristana, are going to head in her direction. Then during the spawn step, you'll add new minions to all empty rune spaces showing that just rolled color. And in the final step, minions will attack as normal. However, in this scenario, after the minion phase, we now have a new danger phase that occurs before the end of the round, and here, the boss activates. Just like the players, the boss has a command line, and so the first step is to execute the boss's command line going from left to right, activating the pre-printed commands that you find on each space. Then deal two boss cards face up, and as a team, players will choose one of them to keep, placing it into the same slot that matches its element, and the other they'll discard. This will cover up the old command that was there and give you a new one to perform during the next danger phase. These can also level up like player commands, but be careful. You don't ever want a single space to have three cards in it because then, during the next danger phase, when it activates, you immediately lose. This represents the boss minion having fully charged his doom cannon. So I guess we'd better defeat this boss quick. The only problem is he has added defenses represented by these rune coins. While a coin is on top of a color, then the boss will suffer no damage from attack commands of that color type. So let's say Corky here was trying to execute this ripsaw, which would do one damage to the first target in a straight line, which could be the boss, except the boss can't take any damage because the coin is on top of that color. However, as soon as a mech steps onto a rune space on the board, you then remove the rune coin from that space assuming it's not already removed. So let's say Tristana here somehow managed to maneuver over to this rune space. We'd then slide the coin off, and then if Corky was triggering his ripsaw, he could do one damage to the boss. 
As soon as the boss takes damage from a type of attack, that coin goes back onto the symbol, blocking damage from that type of attack until the coin is removed again. If you have an unlock schematic that does damage, it can target any of the boss's unshielded areas. Just be sure to turn one of those shields back on after you resolve the damage. The boss isn't all bad, just mostly bad. He's pretty reckless, and if he would enter a space with minions, he stomps them, sending them to your minion kills track. Also note that the boss will not slide on oil, and if an effect would cause him to move to a target, and there are two equally distant paths he could take, the players can decide which way he goes. Now you're ready to tackle the mission. If you can reduce the boss's health to zero, you drive him back and then you can read the paragraph here, and when you're ready, find and unseal the Operation Hammer Keeper envelope to continue your adventures. If you want to learn how to play this scenario, then you'll find a link to it in the description of this video. And if you have any questions at all about anything that you saw here, don't hesitate to put them in the comments below and I'll gladly answer them as soon as I get a chance. But until the next episode, thanks for watching.